This is a screen capture video 10.2 and in the last video I ran out of time I was talking about contact inhibition. In the normal situation when cells are dividing by mitosis and they come in contact with each other they're signaled to stop dividing and that's called contact inhibition. Uh, some text, some sources will call it density, density dependent inhibition but uh, contact inhibition is a an expression that's oftentimes used. The, uh, the idea of cells not understanding that they're in contact with other cells and to be turned off, this leads us into a discussion about uh, cancer cells. Yeah. Tumors can be benign or they can be cancerous. Uh, if they're benign, they'll just be relatively normal cells that are uh, enlarging, uh, dividing increasing number, but uh, uh, not invading other tissues and not spreading to other parts of the body. There are what are called oncogenes that uh, can be inherited and they can also be uh, gained from viruses. And these oncogenes can be turned on and cause a tumor or normal cells to become cancerous where they do invade normal tissues and very possibly moved other parts of the body. It's thought that about 10% of cancers are viral uh, in their cause or caused by viruses. It was discovered in the 1980s that uh, specific viruses caused cancer. There's a, a, a boy by the name of David, that's how he was known. He had to be kept in a microbial free environment at least as best they could. He's basically lived in a bubble and it's called the bubble boy. And uh, he was given a bone marrow transplant with the hope of boosting his immune system and for him to be able to live a more normal life outside amongst other people. But unbeknownst to the uh, people that uh, uh, transplanted the bone marrow, they also moved in a virus called the Epstein-Barr virus which causes mononucleosis and that caused him to get cancer and he died from it several months later unfortunately. There are different cancers they have different names carcinoma we think of a cancer that infects the epithelial cells and uh, that those would be the, the coverings of the body both inside and outside. Sarcoma we think of the supporting structures of the body such as bone and muscle especially that sarco, we think of muscle. Leukemia uh, would be a cancer of the blood, and it would um, be found in blood-producing tissues such as bone um, and uh, the spleen and others. Lymphoma is a cancer of the lymph nodes. And uh, this brings up the HeLa cell line. Back in the early 1950s, there was a woman by the name of Henrietta Lacks, and that's where the cells get their name from, Henrietta Lacks, her first and last name. She had cervical cancer. She went to John Hopkins University for diagnosis and possible treatment. And unbeknownst to her or her family members, some of her cancer cells were removed and grown in the laboratory. And they grew very well, and they did better than other cells at the time. And so... Not only were they used by John Hopkins University, but they were sent around the United States. And uh, good chance if you were to work with a human cell line today, they very possibly could be the HeLa cell line after decades of uh, being propagated. And they were cancer cells, and they, they divided very well and stayed alive in artificial conditions. As we're talking about chromosomes and uh, division of the, the cells. We've talked about asexual uh, division of the cells. We've talked about mitosis for growth and repair. We'll eventually move into discussion of meiosis. But uh, one of the things that needs to happen is the genetic material of the parent cell needs to be passed on to daughter cells. In mitosis, you ended up with cells with the exact same genetic information as the parent cell. In meiosis, the chromosome numbers will be halved and the daughter cells will 
do not all have the same information that the parent cell had. And it's because of a decrease in the genetic information. When uh, you consider your own genome, your own chromosomes, half of your chromosomes came from your mom, half came from your dad. And so we have 22 pairs of chromosomes plus the sex chromosomes. 23 of your chromosomes came from mom, 23 came from dad. Whether you're male or female, you have an X chromosome, which is the, the sex chromosome, and 22 others that uh, came from your mom. If you're a male, uh, you have a, um, a Y that came from your dad and the 22 others. And if you're female, it's possible to have gotten an X from your dad because he either is going to give an X chromosome or a Y chromosome as a sex chromosome to the offspring. But those 22 pairs, those are called homologous chromosomes because they have genes for the same characters. It may be for whether you have a widow's peak or whether your earlobes are attached or whether you have flat feet or whether your little fingers are uh, crooked, on and on and on. It may not carry the same genes, but the same trait is coded for. And the homologous pair will be the same size. The uh, autosomes would be those chromosomes that make up the 22 pairs. The sex chromosomes determine sex. That's why they're called sex chromosomes. And the X and the Ys are the sex chromosomes. The Y chromosome is not as large and does not as, contain as much information as the X chromosome. But generally, uh, what happens uh, under normal circumstances, a female will have two X's and a male will have an X and why. This brings us to the next set of processes under the name of meiosis. The purpose of meiosis is to produce gametes or sex cells and meiosis occurs in the ovaries or the testes. These are the gonads and um, the idea of meiosis in producing these sex cells or gametes is to go from a 2N chromosome number to a 1N chromosome number, to go from diploid to haploid. And so the parent cell is going to produce a possible four daughter cells that are haploid or N, 1N, N chromosome number. And now in this uh, illustration, uh, you can see the sex cells, the gametes that are haploid, will join in fertilization to form a diploid zygote, 2N, full 46 chromosomes. In each of the gametes, you have 23 chromosomes, 23 plus 23, 46, which is 2N. This uh, zygote that's produced is going to go through many, many mitotic divisions. So the person goes from one cell to trillions of cells. So a lot of mitotic events. And eventually, from uh, meiosis, then the sex cells will be produced. And my understanding, I've been told, is that a female will have uh, all of her ova, oocysts, produced before birth. And uh, males keep producing sperm throughout life, but it, it does slow down in later years. Meiosis has two parts. There's meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. In meiosis 1, the chromosome number is halved. And there's a prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase 1, and then cytokinesis. And the homologous pairs are split up. So one homologue will go to one side of the cell, the other homologue will go to the other side of the cell. This prepares for meiosis 2. In meiosis 2, the single chromosome, which is made up of two chromatids, is split apart. One chromatid, which becomes a new chromosome, goes to one side, and the other chromatid, the sister chromatid, goes to the other side. And again, each one of these chromatids becomes a chromosome at this point. So uh, in meiosis 2, the Chromosome numbers already halved, it's in, but we're increasing the number of cells that are in. So at the end of meiosis 1, 
we have two cells that are in, one in, one in, and in meiosis 2, we have the potential of four cells that are in, 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 and in. 23 chromosomes in each cell. Now, researchers tell us that uh, in spermatogenesis, the production of sperm, we'll have four sperm cells that are produced. In oogenesis, where an ovum is produced, generally we only have one ovum that's produced, and the other three sometimes are referred to as polar bodies, and they generally disintegrate. And that helps to understand why males have so many more sperm than females have ova. This is a comparison from the text of mitosis to meiosis. And I probably have already mentioned that meiosis 2 is most similar to mitosis. The chromosome number is staying the same, just increase in the number of cells. The big difference is that in meiosis 2, you're starting with n number of chromosomes and ending with n number of chromosomes, whereas in mitosis, you're dealing with 2n cells. So this is preparation for sexual reproduction. And um, sexual reproduction allows for organisms to better survive in their environment because those genes which help the organism to survive will then be found in the su successful organism and be passed on to the next generation. And those organisms that don't have genes that help them to survive tend to die off or not be as viable and don't tend to pass as many genes off to the next generation. Keep in mind that each offspring, each sex cell, uh, well actually each offspring from the sex cell from one parent, sex cell from another parent, is each, each one will have 50% of the genes from the parent. And sibling offspring from the same two parents can have anywhere from 0 to 23 chromosome pairs in common with each parent. Very unlikely that they'll have 0 or 23. It would be somewhere in the middle, which would be more common. Here are the human chromosomes, as they might appear, gathered from a cell. They've been stained, probably with methylene blue or something similar to it, so that they show up better. And uh, in this fashion, they are of large enough size that you can see them through the microscope, the light microscope. Here's what's called a karyotype. They go from the largest chromosomes to the smallest chromosomes. And this happens to be a male because here's a Y chromosome and here's an X chromosome. And an individual containing a Y chromosome would be male. And uh, they're lined up by their size. You see 22 pairs plus the sex chromosomes. When you're considering meiosis, uh, we're looking at uh, two homologous pairs of chromosomes. They're lining up along the equator. Um, just with the two pairs of chromosomes, you can end up with this combination, or depending on how they're assorted, uh, how they align in meiosis 1, you can end up with this combination. And as you increase chromosome number, you increase the possible combinations. And this is why it's possible for two siblings to look very different from each other. It just depends on what chromosomes are passed to the uh, sex cells, to the gametes, and which gametes uh, join in fertilization.